look at that. What a fantastic space. God, it's like being inside a church. I love the height and those fantastic timbers above, which are really beautiful. Unlike the functional utility buildings of today, the Victorians built theirs with pomp and pride, using materials such as iron, steel and glass. They adopted a variety of decorative styles, which included Gothic Revival and Neoclassical. Even though this was a smaller rural pumping station, the exposed glazed brickwork, sandstone arch window frames and pine beams are typical examples of Victorian industrial architecture. The building is not listed, but it's still an important local landmark. Just compare the place that you used to live in, in London, compared to what you're going to be living in now. Well, it was about this big. How big? <laughs> this big? Yeah. Just, just was, this area here? Could, that was the size of your flat? Yeah. You can fit five of our flats into this. What used to be a giant space where the industrial machinery once sat is now a stylish kitchen diner which combines the traditional Victorian brickwork with clean modern finishes. What a change. What a transformation. When you think about how much this was a real mess and the slab that you had to break out yeah. and all the, all the digging out yeah. and the stripping back. What looks even more impressive is the way the new windows complement the interior space. To me, that really looks like a really elegant way of restoring a building like this. Mm. You know, the new windows are beautiful, highly engineered, along with, you know, the stone mullions, the stone sill, the beautiful detailing of the brickwork, the pointing, which I think is a really lovely thing anyway. Yeah. yeah. Alongside a new white internal skin. That is about dragging a building at the 21st century, but really respecting mm. the qualities that it has. It took Ali and Matt six months to decide the window design and cost them half their original budget of £60,000. In the end, I think they've chosen the perfect style. Using thin steel frames painted black gives them a sleek, modern look. The more I look at them, the more beautiful they are. And they opened as well. This was a big debate, wasn't it? Look at that. Very yeah. similar. And it's really nice that the whole panel goes out as well. Yeah. The stone that Ali and Matt reclaimed from the building has been reused as a reminder of what was there once before. You got the... The slabs in? Yes, we've got the slabs back yeah. in. The slabs are in! Are. Look at that! Still with holes intact. It's a lovely gesture that, isn't it? Just a little kind of imprint, if you like, in memory of those massive, huge blocks that were there. I mean, you stand here looking at this now and you think, oh my god. And we still got this to come down yet. So that's it. Oh, that lean to? No, not no, no, that's the only. That's up to the lean to. There. Up to the lean to? Yeah, yeah, that bit's got to come down. So you're taking this down? Well, it's all leaning and crack, and I like straight flat things. Fair enough. New, straight, flat. I mean, I got to live here for the rest of my life, and I want it right. But I want it to look like it was originally. Is this bit staying, or is this coming down? No, that's staying. This was the, the last part built on the school. Yeah. Um, I think it was originally built as a, an office. And whereabouts is your house going to be? Where are you actually going to live? In this this, this area here is going to be the bedroom. Up on the first floor? Yeah. Yeah. And this has all been uh, rebuilt from scratch down to the ground. So that's new build? That's well, new. brand new. Brand new. That's amazing. Everything that came out was going back in. The, the barge boards were the original barge boards taken down and uh, rubbed back and restored. Ian and Jane are committed to the highest standards of restoration. But the scale and condition of the old building is overwhelming. That's how wet and damp and soaking this is. Six weeks later, it's an important day for Ian and Jane. Yay! After nearly three years of living in a caravan, they're finally waving it goodbye and relocating it to the local holiday park. Closed for 20 years and full of dry rot, this imposing piece of Victorian architecture was a crumbling shell. Ian and Jane have now completely rebuilt all but one of the school's original Gothic facades and brought the restored structure into the 21st century by kitting it out with the latest green technologies. Look at the light coming through those windows as well. That's beautiful, isn't it? Awesome, the windows. They look fantastic, and I love the way that you've kept the exposed bit of brickwork in between. Yes. Adjoining the lounge is a bathroom. 
Its timber wall panelling was reclaimed from the 19th century assembly hall next door. With water heated by a combination of solar, air and natural sources, and the toilet flushed by collected rainwater, it's designed to be sustainable on every level. The couple's principles have always been more important than the pace of the project. Every possible piece of the school's 130-year-old timber has been carefully recycled, from the structural oak beams to Ian's skillfully restored windows. But it's all part of the ethos of this building, isn't it? It's not just about the technology and the gadgets, and it's not just about the insulation. It's about reusing, salvaging as much as you possibly can. Don't waste anything. And then when it's done, try not to waste energy from there on in as well. Yeah. Originally, the mill's wheel would have turned in the open air, but it was prone to freezing up in winter, so it was later enclosed in this lean-to extension. The mill was built into the side of the hill, and the weight of all that earth is threatening to push the building over, so the whole bank will need to be dug out. Just before Easter, the bad weather returns, and they're hit by the coldest spring for 50 years. The budget certainly isn't going to plan. In addition to the purchase price of £100,000, they've already spent around £250,000 on restoring the mill. You get your frustrating days where you've had really, really bad weather, and jobs can't get done. Despite being £125,000 over budget, the level of workmanship on this restoration hasn't been compromised. Today they're fitting the bespoke metal staircase, which will lead from the living room up to their bedroom. What used to be the old wheelhouse has been transformed into a spacious hall with traditional lime wash on the walls. When they started this restoration, the mill was one big open space. It's now been divided up and a bright welcoming kitchen occupies the ground floor. The old mezzanine level has been refurbished and is now a useful storage area. Standing on the exact spot where the inspection pit used to be is the table made out of the old timbers. And the reconditioned steel workbench fits right in with its new role as a kitchen unit. From being a single space, the mill has now been split into three levels. Love the staircase. The stunning first floor living room is an open plan space, which allows you to appreciate the beauty of the original windows. Leading off the hall on the ground floor, there's a bright functional office. Above it on the first floor is an elegant and spacious guest bedroom. Outside, where a muddy bank once threatened to push the old mill over, there's an attractive terraced garden. The old brick water channel that was uncovered during the build has been turfed over with a lush green lawn that marks the path the water would have taken. It must be really difficult for someone like Alan, a professional building surveyor, to take on a project like this. Why? Because when you're seduced by such a beautiful but derelict building like this was, your heart begins to overrule your head. You fall in love with the building so much, you may as well throw the rule book out of the window. And that's why Alan and Dora went so massively over budget. Has it been worth it? Absolutely. Because without people like them, beautiful buildings like this wouldn't survive.